Okay, case 10. Okay, I think I'm up here. So we have the um, punch biopsy, um, <clears throat> wasting a little bit of hyperkeratosis, um, some pigment in the basilar layer there, so I need that for skin patient. Um, and then looking at the dermis, um, we, to me, there seems to be some like spaces in the dermis. Um, and as we go closer, I am trying to look for what I think, you know, if there's spaces, I think maybe there's mucin in there. I think it's a little bit hard. Well, it's a, it's, I think you can see it, but it's yeah. not quite as obvious. Other, uh, it's it's a faded slide. Like I said, the mucin, like uh, on H and E, the subtle blue of mucin fades out really quickly. Like in like I don't know, less than a year. It's really kind of sad. You get a, this beautiful recut for teaching, and then a year from now, it's already fading. But and and then it's it's worse also. Like on the we're projecting it, and we're looking at a digital slide where the light can. Uh, it's also hard to take pictures of mucin sometimes because it can wash out because of the white balancing. So I find it challenging. But if you can see, here's white space that this is like artifactual white space where like the collagen's kind of separated from adjacent. But then in between this, this kind of grainy light blue stuff, that's mucin or mixoid material, hyaluronic acid, right? So good. Most importantly, you can tell that the pink collagen bundles, which should be like close to each other, are way separated apart. So you know there's something there, either edema or mucin slash mixoid material separating out the collagen bundles, right? This is way more than just artifact alone would allow. So good. So then, you know, much of the dermis is, instead of being pink, it's like pale blue that's dividing the pink out. So what is this? So this, um, I think because it's not, it has a lot of mucin and it's not hypercellular, hypercellular like you were talking about before, um, it's probably pre-tibial myxedema. Very good. This is like classic for pre-tibial myxedema, also known as thyroid dermopathy. is usually associated with hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease. Um, sometimes can be the presenting sign of Graves. I've, I've seen, uh, I think, two times in practice where uh, diagnosing this, the, they did not know that the patient had Graves. And when we told them, they worked the patient up and the patient had Graves. It classically presents as kind of thickened, like... Um, I think it is like kind of an orangish kind of uh, color. I don't know. How is it How is it classically described in in books to you guys clinically? Anyone know? I don't know if it says a particular color. Uh, the ones I've seen are <clears throat> more like skin colored. Okay. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. So I may have I may have been biased. There was one I saw that kind of had like a, a like slight orangey brown color to it, and so in my mind I always think of that case, but it may be wrong. And I did have one case that presented as erythematous nodules that looked very much like erythema nodosum clinically, um, rather than the thick. So usually kind of a thickened plaque on the bilateral shins, and then the patient often will have you know uh, will have Graves disease, um, <clears throat> autoimmune hyperthyroidism. So, uh, but yeah, there are other forms. There's also a very rare, like, uh, elephantiasis-like form where the whole leg can get kind of expanded. And then there is a, another form, which I did not know until I encountered this, where it can just be a few nodules. And clinically, I think I've seen that twice where uh, we had cases that were nodular. And clinically, two good dermatologists that had not thought of the diagnosis because it didn't look classic. It was this uncommon nodular form, and they thought of paniculitis both times. And I think maybe it, those were both the cases where they, the one time they did not know the patient had Graves until they worked her up. And the other time the patient did have a history of Graves, but it had not been brought up to the dermatologist. It was like a distant history. So, uh, yeah. So that, those are important to know that it can sometimes present in a non-classic way, but it's usually on the shins, but sometimes other parts of the body can get this in patients with Graves disease. All right. And, um, uh, so I have also seen several times where you get this pattern of epidermal kind of acanthosis and hyperplasia with hyperpigmentation of the basal layer, kind of like almost like an epidermal induction, like you'd see over dermatofibroma. So I think this, in this case, probably is reactive. I don't know what the patient's skin type was, but I have seen this multiple times in pretibial myxedema where you get thickening, hyperplasia uh, or hypertrophy of the epidermis and increased uh, basal melanin. Uh, production, which probably accounted for kind of the, the darker coloration I've seen. Um, and so that's pretibial myxedema. And like we said, this is one that is so much mixed, so you don't even need to do a colloidal iron stain. It's so it's obvious if we had a good H&E here, 
and it doesn't have, it's way more mixoid than I've ever seen sclerimix edema look like, and it doesn't have increased cellularity. It has the low, you know, kind of normal number, or even decreased number of fi fibroblasts in the dermis. So that's, a, it's kind of like a, a sea of mucin that's pushing the, the collagen out of the way. So that is uh, pre-tibial mixedema or thyroid dermopathy.